three. Hello, everybody. It's Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. It is Debbie Adams. And Debbie is part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast. And you would definitely benefit from going on to Debbie's podcast and listening to her podcast. They're amazing. They're inspirational. They're motivational. And you will get so much out of them. So you look under The Advisor and you look under Debbie Adams and you'll find her podcast everywhere. Now, today, she really has a great idea. I you know, come to her and she was really thinking about the calling. You know, why do we do the things we do? And she's going to go more into that and explain that so you understand what she actually means by that. But today, she has some really inspirational messages that she wants to get across and things that she feels that will really help you in your day-to-day -day life and really open your heart to look at life in a different way and have different meaning to it, positive meaning. So Debbie, as always, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm so excited to hear about this. I love the idea of the call and why we do the things we do. I think that's a really great um, you know, um, thing to put in our heads. Why do we do the things we do? What makes us you know, have the call-ins that we do in life? You know, what brings us to the point we are in, in life today? So you know, tell everybody a little about yourself that have, they haven't heard you know, about you. And let's get into this because I think this would be a great, great thing for people to really understand and, and how they could utilize certain ways that you have, you know, uh, you know, learn from your own experience into their lives. Yes, thank you once again, Stacy, for having me on here. It's always a pleasure, and I know we always have fun with our talks. <laughs> and for those of you who haven't been on here, haven't seen me before, my name is Debbie Adams, and I am an author, and I am um, in the process of working on my fourth book. I'm a faith author, and all of my books are... The words that are in my books come from words that God speaks to my heart. God gives me um, a subject and he and then I go, you know, to um, seeking his guidance on what direction to go with the subject as well as, you know, the title of the book and um, the words in the book and like that. And um I mean, I'm, I grew up in middle Tennessee and, and so, you know, at this stage of my life, I never thought I would be an author, but, um, we are going to talk about a calling today. And with that, I'm going to give a little bit of my story because I think it sort of relates in Stacy's, you've already heard a lot of my story and, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I know you you have new um, viewers a lot of times, and so this would be good for them to hear as well. But um, I was just thinking this past week, the way people do things, the way people go through their life, and it got me thinking, why do people do certain things and other people do another set of certain things? Like take me for an example, before I even thought about writing a book, before God even told me I needed to start writing faith books, I mean, I would go to, I would go get up, go to work, do, you know, come home, have time with family, eat, go back to bed, get up, you know, do the same old thing on the weekends, rest, you know, we go, we, we, I think we get set in a routine and we are just constant, you know, sometimes I feel like we're like robots. We're doing the same thing over and over and over. And, but each of us has a calling and God is our creator. He created each of us, whether you know God or not, God created you. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, he has a plan and a purpose or like we're talking about today, a calling for each of us. Like 
there's missionaries, there's pastors in the church, um, you know, whatever calling, you know, that it is. And I feel like me being an author, I feel like that is my calling. Right. And to bring joy and fulfillment in your life, you need to look inside yourself and see, you know, what do you love to do? What What is it that you're desiring to do? Maybe you have a goal in your life or a dream. Maybe you dream to go build a boat, you know, or tra travel the world, go to the other side of the world and do something to help people over there. I mean, whatever it is, and that is that is just my that was just my thinking this past week. It's like God created us, and God has a plan for us. We might not realize what it is, mm -hmm. but in my story, I think God's plan or my calling started when I was a child. Because you've heard me say before that I grew up on a farm and I loved reading books and my parents would take me, you know, to the library every Saturday and I would get lost in the story of a book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can travel to many worlds in a book if you get caught in a story. And yeah. I mean, I mean, even even today, even as adult, you know, I can still read a book and I it, you know it kind of I like the kind of author that the way they write you can feel like you are right there with the characters yeah, yeah. and even though my books are faith books mm -hmm. that I tr well, you probably know um from my books that's how I try to write right because like I'm talking to you right now, people that read my books, I want them to feel like as they are reading it, they, I, that is me sitting in front of them, you know, talking to them, the words that are in the book. Right. And so I think some people might not even think about a calling on their life. I mean, I never did. I just, you know, just went through my life and, you know, did, had responsibilities that I knew I had to do. And, and then on, you know, slack days, like on the weekends, I, you know, play with my animals or do whatever. Yeah. But I have learned through writing books and over the past three years, you have stuff in your heart and that you don't realize is even in there until yeah. you start examining yourself. Mm -hmm. Like um, the last book that I wrote, my most current book, Straighten Your Crown, it talks a lot about your heart and it's up here, some whichever direction. And, yeah, 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 the other one. And so um, that book really got me thinking about yes what I am doing is a calling and right. I want and I want to see other people to find their calling as well and to do that you have to first examine your heart examine examine your mindset first off because you know we've talked before about whatever is in your mind you have to get your mind set on something before you will be fully able to conquer it, um, mm -hmm. so to speak. And so in order to do that, your mind has to be clear if, you know, if you've got situations in your life and, you know, we all do. And some, you know, some people might say, oh, well, I've always dreamed of doing this and this could be my calling, but I can't because I don't have no money or, 
this situation or that situation. And growing up, my dad always said, if you keep saying you can't, you never will. Right. So my thing today for your listeners is take a le leap of faith. It's I'm not really asking for a leap of faith for the, you know, for those that don't believe in God, they're, they're they might say, oh, well, leap of faith. Oh, you're talking, you know, Christian religion, not necessarily. I mean, you take a leap of faith to do to advance to whatever it is that you're desiring to do. Right. And to just um just say yes and take one step forward and don't take a step back and i picked up on that when i did a virtual um speaking conference that i went to um i think it was a year ago and they were talking about how you need to keep a positive attitude in your life or you yeah. will never accomplish what you want to set out to accomplish. And that mm -hmm. goes along with, you know, um, our calling or our mission of life. It could be called that. And if you keep taking steps backwards, right. you will not accomplish anything. So yeah. that's why my, my focus ever since, ever since I heard that at that conference, my focus has always been, and that was at the beginning of my book writing. Yes. You know, it's, I get an idea in my head and then, you know, how we, we're worse on ourselves than other people are, you know, and I'll, you know, I'll get an idea and I was like, nobody's going to like that idea. <laughs> and, and then I'll just kind of, you know, push it back. And then I was like, no, I'm going forward with this and see where it goes. And so far, I mean, all three of my books have been bestsellers. So they must have liked that idea, <laughs> but <clears throat> that's, that's what I'm trying to get across um, today is whatever you're going through in life, don't let that set you back from yes. what you know you need to do. 100%. I think, you know, I think people have to have that leave of faith. You know, we all have leadership in our, in ourselves. We all can be leaders. We all can take charge. And, and when I mean by leaders, we all have that inner power that, that we have that strength within us. And if we come up with an idea or a thought, or we, we have something that we think can better the world, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing that can stop us. You know, we just have to believe in ourselves. We have to, you know, and in believing in ourselves, we have to think we're worthy of ourselves. We have to think that we're worth ourselves. And a lot of times, mm -hmm. people, you know, have low self-esteem and they don't believe that they're worth, you know, what they really are. And everybody is somebody. Everybody is worthy. Everybody can be a leader if they choose. And if you mm -hmm. have an idea, if you have, you know, a concept in your head and you think if you go through with it, you'll be able to do something for the better of good of society, you should definitely, definitely take the leap of faith and go for it. What is the worst thing that could happen if you do something that you believe in? It may not, sometimes it will, it will just like shine through and you, you will be a rock star. And then there are times where we, we may not get the results that we're looking for, but we'll never know if we don't try. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I, I've had, there have been situations in my life, you know, where I have tried to do things and it just kind of, you know, fell apart. And, but that's just something I didn't need to do. Yes. Like, um, it was uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago, I guess now. Um, I was going to start making jewelry and, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, everybody, every woman loves jewelry yeah. and, you know, and, um, you know, I did make some nice pieces, whatever. And, but it's just like, my heart wasn't in it. It's like, yeah, I like doing this, but it's like, 
you know, after a while, it just kind of, you know, got boring. And, yeah. and so um, that, you know, that just kind of fell by, by the wayside. And I wasn't even thinking about, you know, my call and my mission in life back then. And, but, you know, that's it. You just have to put your foot forward. And if you have an idea, like the jury making, you know, go for it. Yeah. And if if it doesn't work out, you know, then go to plan B. You know, right. always my dad I told me growing up, always have a plan B. And it's like, you know, with my book writing, um, you know, I think it was I think it was the second, yeah, it was the second book that I wrote, The Divine Promises. Yeah. I started writing that and um it just wasn't going anywhere. And so because God wanted me to tell my story, and a lot of my story is in that that book. Um, but he wanted me to go a different direction on parts of it in telling my story. Right. Because I wanted to, you know, because that was taking me back through what I had been through and when you've been through something you know cancer yeah and you know I'm 16 years this November cancer free praise God (laughs) but still when you're writing a book about it and you have to re-experience all of that all over yeah and so I was just keeping it kind of basic and God yeah. wanted me to go, you know, more in detail in certain areas. And so, you know, it's just like the, it's like he made, you know, the first draft kind of fall apart. Yeah. Because he wanted, he wanted it to be better. And when it came, when that book came out, it was the best. And I've had so many compliments on that book and so many comments of you know how it had helped other people yeah and so whatever our calling is um whatever it is that people find that they would love to do yeah it's going it's not only going to affect yourself it's going to affect others around you Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, I've always been a person who loves to help others. And I feel like, I mean, even as a child, you know, I did that. And, you know, with my writing books, I feel like I'm encouraging, trying to encourage and help others. And so whatever other people find that their calling is, find some purpose in that calling. Find some way that what you are doing is going to benefit someone else. And that will be like we talk, well, you know, we talk all the time, you know, about book writing, you know, the why of your book. Yeah. And even with the calling, you know, people need to see why do you love to do whatever it is you're doing or thinking about doing. Why right. do you want to do this? And, you know, another one is, will you be doing this five years down the road? Where do you right. see yourself in five years? And you, if you had asked me that question I just asked mm-hmm. before I started writing a book, I would have probably said, I have no idea because I wasn't really thinking, you know, about what I was just going through, you know, my daily life, daily routine. Yeah. But now, if you ask me that, I can tell you, unless God changes the plan on my life, um, I'm going to still be writing books. I'm still going to be encouraging people. And I, you know, I have about three subjects already um that I do want to write in a book mm-hmm. 
So, yeah, I mean, it it all work it all works together. I mean, your heart, I mean, your mindset to start with, and then your heart, and then what your what you love to do, and how it can affect everyone. Yes, a hundred percent. I think you, you know, you really, your heart tells you when it's your true calling. Like, I, I really feel like when, when, when you feel that, that ignition, that fire underneath the bridge, you know, like you feel Mm -hmm. ignited to, to keep doing what you're doing. It's like become that passion, that mission, that goal, and you want to get out of bed and you want to, you want to work on what you love to do, you know, that, and you know, it's your true calling, you know, but you know, Mm -hmm. When you really feel the fire is really when you know it's your true calling, I think. Mm -hmm. That's that. That is it. Exactly. I mean, I never even thought about, you know, a calling. I mean, I knew, you know, I, you know, I grew up in church all my life. And so I've heard, you know, God has a plan for your life, you know, and I'm like, yeah, okay. And (laughs) You know, and I just live my life and I hope that, you know, what I'm doing is pleasing, you know, to God. And but I never really thought about a calling, a mission in life. I thought a calling was, you know, like he calls the missionaries to go to the mission field. He calls the pastors to preach, you know, but just normal people. I mean, I didn't really think much about it until... He started speaking to me um, about, you know, writing a book. And he told me, you know, that I needed to share my testimony. And, you know, I'm this this hard headed, you know, Southern gal, you know, and it took him a few weeks, you know, before (laughs) before Mm -hmm. I finally said, okay, just show me what, you know, you're wanting me to do, you know, and I'll do it. And you know, if now, I mean, you ask me why I do what I do. It's because God has called me to do this. Right. And, you know, and I plan on doing this because I enjoy doing this. I, well, I still enjoy reading books and I enjoy writing books, different, different kinds of books. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm writing faith books. I, I think my calling will always be faith books, but it could possibly go a slight direction different than what I've been writing. Um, <clears throat> but it's, you know, it's all going to come back around, you know, to faith in yeah. a sense. And so, you know, I know some people out there, they're, you know, they know what they need to do mm-hmm. and they're just afraid to do it. Right. And so to those people, I'm going to say, stop being afraid because God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's Mm -hmm. given us a spirit of faith and let your faith be stronger than your fear and just launch out and, you know, just take the plunge, sort of speak, and, Mm -hmm. you know, just see where it goes. And, and I want to talk to going along that I had mentioned to you earlier, I went to see a movie this weekend and one of the things in the movie is are you a fountain or or are you a dream and when we have a calling and or we're trying to figure out what our calling is Mm -hmm. just be a fountain to everyone around you and see how god can bless you in that yes that's so true. And I think if, if if you're a fountain and you are trying to call out and do for others, you know, the people who who aren't fountains, when you think of the drain, 
they're they're just staying in their little cubicle, their little bubble that they've created mm -hmm. for themselves. And they are the ones that are getting drained because they're not they're not putting themselves out there. The biggest the biggest um, feeling of achievement is when you're able to help others. And, you know, one of the things that I feel is that you always if, if you really want to feel good about yourself, you have to put yourself out there. You have to be a fountain. You have to pour out your love, your kindness, show people the gratitude. And again, that goes back to being a leader in your community, being mm -hmm. a pillar, you know, and showing people because sometimes people want to do things. They just don't know how. And they look for those mentors and they look for those people that really have an impact on their lives. And they may not tell the person, they may tell the person, but they will use you as an example. And, you know, so being a fountain and being an example to others and really shining all the goodness, you know, that you have and all those messages and, and showing people a different way of thinking, living, you know, dreaming and, and living life in all you know, you're actually helping people improve their overall lives, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, you know, you're showing people a whole new way of life. And that's being a fountain. But mm -hmm. the people who don't, you know, live in their little cubicle, and the more you live in your little cubicle, the you're, you don't, you're, you don't, you're, you don't really think too much, you're, you, you have a few thoughts, and you just stay within that little cubicle. And those are the people who never change their view on life. They never try new things. They just keep doing what they're doing. They're not very happy. I don't see many of those type of people happy. You know, they maybe put on the fake smile here and there, <laughs> but you can tell by their body language that they're not truly happy. And the only way to be happy, I think, is to be a fountain in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you hit that topic, right? Because if you stay, well, you said cubicle, but I always say, get out of your box. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, going back to me as an example, I always tell people that God got me out of my box because mm -hmm. when when he told me that I needed to start writing books and I thought, oh boy, this is completely different. And, yeah. you know, and we all face challenges and changes in our life. And some people don't like change. Um, you know, they'd rather just stay in their little box, their little cubicle. And when you put change out there to them I mean they just you know go crazy and yeah. you know for a better word mm -hmm. and so we have to branch out like the like the trees in our yard you know every spring they get new branches and they branch out to something you know brand new yeah and that is what we need to do in our lives right I mean I already you know I'm already have a calling but I'm still within a, my calling I'm still branching out and learning new things and that's what we should all be willing to do not just stay where you're at but just be willing to accept change um learn be be willing to learn new things and you know just just see where it will go because if you're a fountain and you yeah. are out there just helping others um you know encouraging others you will be surprised I mean I was really surprised in just in my life <clears throat> but you will be surprised how God will favor you and he will throw blessings down on you and open doors yeah. that you had no idea about. Mm -hmm. And so I cannot tell you how many doors that he has opened for me since I have been an author. And I mean, even, you know, today or this week I mean it still amazes me when you know doors open and I'm like oh man thank you Lord another door is open and I'm going you know a slight direction you know from where I was but 
that, I mean, no matter what you're doing in life, you're, you always need to be learning. You need to step out from your old routine and be willing to accept change and face challenges with gusto. Yeah. And, you know, like I said earlier, just step forward and keep going and see where it will go. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, it's so inspirational and, and it's so true. And, and, and so many people have so many good things to offer and they, they let fear be the dominant factor that stops them from, from really following their calling in life, you know, and when that happens, the, the best way I think is just to face your fears. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard for people to face their fears, but that's the only way I feel, you know, to really overcome, you know, if you're in a situation where, you know, you feel God is, is really leading you in a direction and you may not understand it, but you're following what God is telling you, you have to, you know, just take the chance, you know, and cause you, you might self doubt, is this what I really should be doing? You know, if you really feel like it's, 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 it's your calling, go for it, try it, you know, mm -hmm. then, like I said before, the, the worst thing that could happen, it doesn't work out exactly how you planned. And that's the worst thing that could happen. Other than that, you know, it, it, it's, it, there's, there's nothing, nothing stopping you except for yourself. That is, that is so true. That's and and I was going to add to that, you know, that, you know, people might say, oh, that's for the younger generation, you know, like, and, you know, I can't do whatever, you know, they might want to do. I can't do that because, you know, I'm retired, you know, and, and I have all these health issues, but, you know, I'm, in the older gener, not old, old, but I'm in the older generation. So if I can do what I am doing, anybody can take a leap of faith and do what they are dreaming to do. Yes. And I'll tell you, I, I've taken courses for, for certain things. I've, I've done you know, gone to conventions where people are learning to enhance their, their abilities and make themselves better than what they are. And it's all our age group. It's, it's, you know, you go there and you might, you, before you get there, you might say, oh, maybe I'm too old to be doing this. And then each time I've, I've, I've gotten to where I have to go, I look around and everyone's my age and older. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, you know, change is, it, it doesn't matter how old you are. Change could happen at any time. You know, like I, I have heard per people who have had, you know, who've had opportunities when they're early twenties. I've heard most people that I, I have talked to that have had opportunities come their way and they've been successful. It didn't happen until their fifties plus. So, you know, it's, it's very, you know, it's, it's very common. Anything could happen, you know, um, you know, but it's never too late. It definitely mm -hmm. never. Too late. Yeah, that, that is true. And my philosophy is if, if you have a dream, if you're wanting to do something, do it today because we are not promised tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. This earth could be wiped out tomorrow. We'll all be gone. Who knows? Yeah. So, you know, do it. Whatever you're dreaming of doing, do it today. Exactly. Exactly. Now, tell me, um, tell the listeners, actually, a little about each of your books so they understand your books and, and let them know where they can find them also. My books are on Amazon and um, my first book is just on Amazon, Unlocking the Code to Bliss, um, Southern Bell's Secret. That is the only one that is just on Amazon. And that book is, um, it's about living a healthy lifestyle. And I talk a little bit about, you know, how God created our bodies, how your brain is all connected to different parts of your bodies and how sunshine helps your hair, helps your skin. And you can even, you know, which I do a lot, go outside and walk barefoot and let the nutrients in the grass 
you know, um, absorb into your feet, you know, and help your body that way. And I do have, you know, like a, like a, a funny chapter in there too, is for the Southern veil that was, you know, that was the subtitle since I'm from the South. And I put a little quirks in there, you know, about what Southern bales do. Um, and then my second book, Divine Promises, um, it is on Amazon and on every online bookstore. And it's also in Canada at um, Chapters Bookstore online. And Divine Promises talks a lot about my testimony, my history, um, going through the cancer, how I depended on God. And I talk about 10 of God's promises and I relate them to not only my cancer, but to other situations I've had in life from losing a job to losing a husband um, to having a tornado directly on top of my house and God moved it. And I know everyone loves that story. <laughs> and um, that one is, um, yeah, that one is, that one is found, you know, all over. And then my current book is Straighten Your Crown. And it's found on Amazon and all of the other um, book online bookstores. And um, we talked a little bit about it, but it has to do with the crown in your heart, not the crown on your head. Right. And I, I talk about having a purpose in life, how to um, get confidence in what you're doing and confidence in your life and how to keep it and how to keep a positive attitude. Um, you just you know, a bunch of different subjects to where we can keep positivity in our lives and negativity out. And you can also go straight to my website and there is a link for each book and it will take you directly to Amazon to buy the book. And my website is debbieadamsbooks.biz. B I Z. I love it. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you wanted to emphasize on a couple important things, what would be some of the things that you want the listeners to really understand from our conversation? First thing would be to put fear behind you and put faith in front of you. And the second thing would be whatever you're wanting to do, whatever you feel like your dream in life is, your calling in life is don't be afraid to take a step forward and try to accomplish it because, and I say try to accomplish it because you might not accomplish it on the first step, but keep going and you will accomplish what your dream and calling is. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. I, I really, um, you know, love how you've, you've gone through so much in life and you never let any of the obstacles in life you know, really pull you down. You rose above the chaos, you overcame your obstacles and you took everything that you've learned throughout life, you know, the good and the bad. And you use that experience to help others, which I think is fabulous. And you really, you know, you had a calling, you know, you, you had, you know, God's words came through you and into your heart and you just went with it. You took a chance mm -hmm. and you went with it, you know, your first mm -hmm. book, you, know, you never wrote a book before. It's a scary <laughs> thing. It's a lot of work, you know, and you did, it, you know, and now you have several published books out, you know, and I, I'm so proud of you. I, I think you've done a miraculous job and your message is, is so powerful. I love your message. I love how you, you think with such love and such kindness and such care 
you know, and a lot of people that have gone through so much in life, you know, a lot of people hold on to a lot of things and negativity takes over their life. And instead of negativity taking over your life, you, you know, you let go of all the things that, that were negative in your life. And you looked at the positive of each negative and you held on to that positive and it brought you to who, where you are today. And it's made you the person you are today. And for that, I have to commend you because mm -hmm. you, you You've done a wonderful job and, and, you know, and these books will be helping so many others because they're beautiful books and the messages are phenomenal. So I really wanted to say thank you so much for doing what you're doing. I think you're doing a great job and we need more people like you on this planet. Well, thank you, Stacy. I appreciate that. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. You know, I, I loved having you on today and I hope, you know, you'll be on soon. I always enjoy when you come on, I always get excited because you always have such great messages to share and I always get something really positive out of them. And so thank you so much for being on the show today. And I really thank you so much. And I can't wait until the next time. Me too. And everybody, if you love Debbie's show, don't forget to follow, like, and comment on the, on the show and conti to continue listening to these podcasts. Just make sure you follow our podcasts. And once again, thank you so much, Debbie. And I can't wait to see you soon. Have a great day. <laughs>